give us a bad question, Jesus doesn't answer you. <laughs> or he asks another question in its place. But Jesus answered this one directly. What do we have to do to do the work that God requires? Jesus said, the work that God requires is this, to believe in the one whom he sent. So if you believe in the one whom he sent, the work is done. You're at rest. That's what was, was, that's what was required of you. Now, every week we go to church or we go listen to sermons or engage in things to say, what does God require of us? Pastor, tell me. Um, preacher, tell me. Uh, sermon, tell me. Bible, tell me. What does God require? Well, to be a new creation, which is what we're being, a beloved son, God requires you believe in the one whom he sent. So you're believing a word, okay? We're going to return to that point. You're believing a word because all things come from believing a word. Everything in manifesting in this atmosphere, in this creation, in this life, all depend on believing a word. The word goes into you and you manifest it. The human body, the human DNA, this human structure is a manifesting machine. That's what it does. And it manifests what it believes. And you all believe a word, a word that you were, thousands of years have been telling you, what your parents told you, what your school told you, what your body is telling you. It's all preaching. It's all frequency. Your body's preaching to you. The weather's preaching to you. The, the news is preaching to you. Illness is preaching to you. Your bank account's preaching to you. Your childhood's preaching to you. That's all giving you a message, a word. And we're dying to that and believing a greater word from another realm that has no decay, that's all love. And that's the word we're choosing to believe. That word's in us already, because Christ, and everything is made of Christ, is the fullness of all things, and Christ is in us. And all we're doing is lining up what we believe in our heart, and thus in our body, our cellular memory, our DNA, our frequency, this thing here, this, this actual physical body, we're gonna change what we believe, change its frequency, change its sound, change, the soil, and then it grows. Because a farmer plants a seed. He goes to bed, he wakes up, gets grown, he doesn't know how. That is the kingdom. So Jesus has explained to us the kingdom. Yep. And Jesus knows what the kingdom's like. <laughs> and um, if you're part of maybe the, the grace movement, um, some truths came through, but they are expressed within a certain context. And you can hear the the garbage truck outside, it's garbage day today, so you might hear the garbage truck soon. <laughs> um, the takeaway, the spiritual garbage. Life's an awakened dream. And um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the grace movement, some garbage came in, rubbish, trash, some trash came in. And um, it's true, but at a certain level, okay? And every truth at a certain level is there to help you attain to something, the, the, the ultimate truth. But the more you want to live out of the spirit, you've got to get rid of old truths because they are now a um, Ishmael for the promise. So for example, I have the Holy Spirit inside me, the same spirit that rose Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body and it quickens it. It gives it life, okay? Life himself, life Jesus Christ is in me and he is giving me life. Now, before I know this or understand this or believe this, I get sick, I take physical medicine. I learn about physical medicine. And I learn that maybe Western medicine, not so good. So I get into some natural medicine, as we call it, natural medicine. And I learn all these things. I learn what turmeric does and I learn what, um, chemicals do to your body. I learn about heavy metals. I learn about all these things. And I get my life right in the area. And my consciousness is fully on the physical. And now I've set myself up a law of knowledge of good and evil. It's true. But if I start wearing elastic underwear, I think, ah, oh, this is giving me xenoestrogens. And if I have some meat from down the road, I think, oh, that's got some uh, antibiotics in it. Okay, I start getting conscience by it, condemned, 
am approved by this level of understanding I have about natural things. Okay. And if you come to me with kidney failure, I say, here, have this herb and this spice and et cetera, et cetera. And then one day I find out that there's healing and there's prophecy and there is supernatural moves of God. And so if I want to move up one to gifts of the spirit, all my teaching of health, what I've used to attain the promise of health, of life from God, using his things that he made, is now an Ishmael for the promise. I'm going to kick out all my natural thinking to use the miracles. Okay? So if I'm in India, I can't go to them and say, hey, oh, I see that you have um, some disease. What you must do is have um, uh, hormone free chicken and you must have cold pressed uh, juices every day and you can't blend it, it must be cold pressed and then you must have essential oil, uh, must be rose oil. It's about $100 a bottle US and it must come from this factory. Okay. And on one level, that's true. I want, to, I want to heal her by a miracle. I have to get all that thinking, which is true at one level, 30 fold, kick it out. I start using 60 fold understanding. And now I learn about miracles and I learn about all these things. But it's another set of consciousness. Yep. And another set of knowledge of good and evil. So then I learn more. I go, ah, she's not healed. Mm, perhaps there is some uh, idol worship in her background, this lady from India. And I have to work it all out and do my little forms. And perhaps she uh, was dedicated to something when she was young, or perhaps she watched the wrong movie. And then uh, perhaps there's generational curses. And then, uh, then perhaps the land is cursed because of what her forefathers did. And there's more and more and more and more learning. Yeah. And it's true. It's accurate. And it takes a lot of understanding. But then you want to be a son of God who is health. Um, miracle can heal, can be healed. Uh, healing, miracle healing, hundredfold. I am the healer. I am the healer. I am health. I am life. Now, to go from there to there, you have to remove all your understanding of the uh, natural law, all your understanding of the spiritual law, and just be. You just are. Receive it as a gift. So we're anchoring ourselves here, over here, that I am healing in this example. I am healing. From there, we live in the faith where we're at. So I am healing. I've got it. But I got a bad report from the doctor and it's, and it's really affecting my emotions. Okay. So I go and see the healing minister and he can pray for me. Fantastic. I am healing. I'm healed already. But because I'm not peacefully living in that at rest, so I don't believe to believe in one whom he sent, I'll use these things that God has given me. Okay. And I am Christ, but it's Christ who makes the healing minister work. Or, I am going to go and take some oregano and some medication, okay? But Christ is my healer, and it's Christ that makes this work because everything's made through him and for him. But Christ is still my rest. But eventually, I want to keep moving things this way, up, up, up to um, being spirit and spirit alone. Because spirit is rest. Spirit runs off your identity. Spirit runs off your new nature. Spirit runs off the fact that you are loved and all things are yes and amen and yours in Christ. <clears throat> That's how spirit works. And um, that is a rest because it's the spirit is your new DNA. I talk about the new DNA that you have, which is righteous, which is love, which is health, which is life, which is wonder, which is beauty, which are all the manifest wisdom of God and all the fractal ex explanations, everything he distills into the the source of that, you're one with that, is your new DNA, is the Spirit of God. So that's why you're healthy, and that's why you'll be healed. We're not moving this way. We're not like, I need to go through all my Freemasonry curses to, 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 to slowly move this way because they're blocking me from God. I'm here in God, and I don't have any directional curses. Please let me finish this whole explanation before we jump in on this little bit here. But I don't have any directional curses because my Father is Yahweh, and Yahweh wasn't a Freemason. 
and Yahweh didn't curse his parents, and Yahweh <laughs> didn't uh, make a graven idol. Okay, so he didn't break any biblical laws or spiritual laws. Okay, he's perfect, and that's who I am. Now, in my life, some things may be presenting themselves, generational curses. And for those people who say, no, there's no generational curse presenting in my life, let me tell you this one thing. Physical death is a generational curse. Yes, yes, yes. So maybe some of the things are presenting in their lives. This is the disconnect comes, okay? So they're presenting in their life. So I'm here. I want this, I want this to move into my life. Now, all we're doing, if I go and pray, if I get deliverance ministry, let's say, or I pray through my generational curses, it's just a different word that's in me that I inherited. And this is different sound. And I'm just removing it so it comes out. Well, the audio M comes out. How does what you have come out? By believing. That's it. Okay. Now, Sozo or deliverance ministry or uh, I believe in turmeric. Okay. They're all things that engage your faith. And if God is your rest, that he is the reason that deliverance ministry works. And he is the reason that turmeric works. Then you stay in that rest and it comes out. And praise God. I don't believe that I say, God, let my inflammation go away. I command it to go away. It doesn't. I don't believe it. because I've had it for 60 years or 20 years. And it's never worked. We pray for it for everyone. Uh, I've got a different sound, a different record in, in my body. And praise God for turmeric. <laughs> turmeric. Turmeric. Whatever you say. Okay? Orange stuff. Praise God for it. Okay? And here's the source of that. And that's why it works. So I'm healed. Do I have inflammation? No, I don't. Is there inflammation in my body? Yes, there is. Okay? Fully facing the facts, I believe the truth. Like Abraham. Fully facing the fact, his body's good as dead. He believed the truth. The truth is, I don't have inflammation. Fact is, my body's inflamed. And all my belief and all my Christian, la, 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 la. It's not presenting in my life. So I have turmeric. Or I go see the healing person or the healing rooms or I get prayer through my life. And instead of turmeric engaging the body, I realize that I, I grew up scared and scared's making inflammation. I deal with that memory through Sozo. Okay. All it's doing is releasing what's already true. Okay. Because I am one with Christ. In fact, I'm going to be everything that God wants me to be. And he wants, me to be, he wants me to be exactly like he is. I hear him praying for something. Jehovah Jireh, send me provision. Jehovah Rapha, send me healing. Here, I'm Christopher Jireh. I'm Christopher Jireh. I'm the one who sends it down, okay? I am Christopher Rapha. I am the healer. I am healing itself. It's not a ministry, not a jacket, not a receipt. I and the Father are one. Me and God are one being. Everything I want him to do, I'm a little kid, teach me. Show me how to wash the car. I go around and wash the car, little kid, and I put little mud circles everywhere. He fixes it up. Okay? We're learning. And if your heart is desires to be like God, not to be in ministry, not to win an argument, but to be like your father, he might get you to heal things in the forest for 20 years and not tell anyone. He wants you to be like him, okay? So I'm learning to be like him because the earth is given to man and heaven belongs to God. This earth is given to man, okay? We're here to govern this earth. All of creation is yearning for the manifest sons, okay? It's been subject to frustration, not willingly, but it has a will, it's conscience, okay? Subject to frustration, not willingly, waiting for us to release it, not Jesus. The tree out there is not waiting for Jesus. It's not. The tree out there is not waiting for a revival. It's not waiting for a rapture. It's waiting for us. So we can give the same salvation we have. That's what we're doing. So we're changing our salvation from one day Jesus will come back and save us 30-fold. Tree, you've been subject to frustration. One day Jesus is going to come back and fix you up. Okay, we give the same salvation we have. Or 60-fold, God can come down in the throne zone, in an area that has revival, this geographic area has revival. And tree, one day revival is going to come to this area, and then you're going to have four crops a year. One day it's going to happen. Heaven's going to come to earth if we repent of our ways and change our ways and blah, blah, blah. 
Okay? That's going to happen. We get the same salvation we have. Or I am already glorified. I am the glorified risen Christ. And I am letting that come into my body. What I do with this, I can do with that. There's a window out there with the trees. Okay? I give what I have. But I already have. I'm not saying wait for Jesus to return. Wait for rapture. I'm not saying wait for revival. I'm not saying wait for the new anointing. I'm saying I have it. I am Jehovah Rotha. I am I'm of him. I'm his son. I've got these attributes. I am the healer. I am the banner of love. I am the banner of love for creation. Okay? That's my true self. That's the anchor. That's the reality. That's truth. Fact is, my life looks different to that. Okay? But in hearing, like you're hearing now, it changes this. It changes the soul and the body. It changes its frequency as it's believed, and it comes out. So you're now more that than you were 10 minutes ago just by the foolishness of preaching the gospel, the foolishness of hearing and hearing alone. So it's a rest and no one can boast. If you believe, you've done the work. Okay? So you must go to believing to be in rest, believing the word, a word spoken. Same way you got saved, a word was spoken. The same way you receive anything from the kingdom. All things on the kingdom come from receiving a word. We partake in the divine nature by good and precious promises. The word. I'm getting ahead of myself. But it's a word that comes, an invisible word. So the more you know God, the more you become like him. And what you have, already have everything you need for life and godliness. Ephesians 1, every spiritual blessing has been given to you in heavenly places, plural. That's where you are. You're in heavenly places and you are releasing that from the kingdom that's already inside you, the oneness with Christ that's already inside you. You're becoming like your father. Everything you want God to come and do, God's saying, no, I want you to take over. I want you to uh, run the creation and I want you to do it according to your will. Make it in your image. Shape it how you desire. Okay? That's what the mature son does. Okay? You slowly take over the company. One day you say to your dad, you take over his company. You say, should we invest in potato stocks? He's saying, your choice now if you invest in potato or gold or insurance. We go this way. We go internet, whatever. You choose. I can give you perspective. I can give you wisdom. But now it's yours. You make a decision. You might get a 20% result or an 80% result, and that's okay. We're learning. As long as your heart is to be like the Father, you must know that you have this, everything you have, because if you don't know you've got it, you will do something to get it. And the thing you do to get it, the mechanism you will engage immediately is the knowledge of good and evil. Because unless it's a gift, it must be a wage. A gift that is dependent on the giver, his nature. A wage is dependent on you by flesh. And we know that no flesh can inherit the kingdom of God. We know that the high priest, when he walked through the veil, was not allowed to sweat in Ezekiel 44. He couldn't wear any clothes that let him sweat because nothing of human effort can be in there. Okay? Nothing of human effort. We must leave all the knowledge of good and evil behind. And the knowledge of good and evil is this. Okay? We all know it. We all do it. Every single one of us. Okay? So let's say that um, you want to uh, start a soup kitchen for God, okay? For God. This is for the kingdom. Nothing better. Serving the poor, soup kitchen, okay? And then you start it up and all of a sudden the council comes in and says, we need $20,000 for your kitchen to be upgraded to council rates, okay? We need it by Monday. And let's say it's Thursday. Now you need $20,000. God only need $20,000. Instantly, you start auditing this area, your body and your soul. Have we been wise with money? Did we do the proper research? Uh, have I been tithing? Uh, am I reading my Bible? This is for God. Surely he would do it. All these things we make up. We make them up. If you need uh, $5,000 to go on a, tr- a missionary trip to Israel, What's more spiritual than that? Yeah, a missionary trip to Israel. 
come on, okay? So they, they love us. They love it when we come over to the missionary trips, all the Jews, they love it. <laughs> so um, <laughs> I was just in Israel working at an orphanage. That's pretty funny, actually, uh, last year. <laughs> Okay, you need five thousand dollars. I need it. I need five. Everyone's going. All my friends are going. I need five thousand dollars. The first thing you do is you audit yourself. Have I been tithing? Have I been generous? Am I close to God at the moment? Have I been uh, giving ten percent of the gross? Have I been using my credit card rightly? Am I angry with my wife or angry with my spouse? These are all the knowledge of good and evil. This is a self audit. You're looking at your flesh. Okay, and you'll approach God. Here, to come and get that $5,000, you will come and approach him from outside the curtain. You will come with your knowledge of good and evil. I have been tithing. I have been good to my wife. I am a good Christian. I have been healing people in the streets. Surely God will give me that $5,000. For your knowledge of good, I've been working hard in the field. I've been working every day in the field. And God, I want you to give me a goat. Okay? Or I've been naughty. I haven't been tithing. In fact, I've been spending my money on online gaming and stuff like that. I'm a terrible person and I uh, actually stole that money from my mum, okay? You go to heaven with that knowledge of evil. The knowledge of good, knowledge of evil are both irrelevant in here. Not irrelevant, banned. You can't come in with that. It got you kicked out. You can't come in with this, okay? You can't come in. We're about to see that in Zechariah 3. This is all you can't come in with that. It is your nature. You are holy and blameless in his sight forever. And you walk in by the DNA that God's given you through the blood of Christ. And you walk in to say, God, teach me to be like you in this area. Not, I need $5,000. You do need $5,000. But you say, God, for this $5,000, grow me up to be like you. How can I be that? And every child will get a different thing. Okay? This person, person A, God will say, yeah, you can have $5,000, of course. And the next person might say, God say, mm, you can't have $5,000 yet because you have a gambling problem. <laughs> and if I give that $5,000, it's going to hurt you. I want to, but let's work on this gambling problem first, okay? And then you'll be able to go overseas. But if you go overseas, you'll take this problem with you. It's only fathered. He's fathering you to be like him. And everyone gets a different deal. Everyone gets a different deal. How God wants to take you to the fullness of the statue of Christ in your lifetime in this body. Peter, like Christ three times, Jesus is restoring him. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Do you love me? Yes. Feed my sheep. Love me? Yes, I do. I really, really do. Yep. Okay. Feed my sheep. Yes. Okay. Peter and Jesus made a decision together. Okay. That's their intimacy. That's their relationship. That's their love. Intimacy. They agape each other. They feel each other. They're friends, and they unconditional love. Okay, and then Jesus says, after Peter said, "Okay, I love you. I'm gonna feed your sheep." Jesus says, "Guess what? And you're gonna be martyred." After. <laughs> okay, you can't be martyred. Now, um, Peter's reaction to that isn't, "Wow, what an honor!" Oh, wow, that's terrible. His first reaction is, "What about John?" What's going to happen to him? That's his first cup. Okay. And Jesus says, what's that to you? What's that to you if you live forever? Okay. Every child's going to go the way that they should go. If you go to God and say, I want to be like you. From my nature. If you want to, uh, if you're not going to do it from there, you'll go the way of your denomination. Which is st stuck in old revelation, as Joseph was saying. Can't remember revelation. How you become like God? Well, you go to church on Easter and Christmas, and you go to confession. And hey, become like God. You do spiritual warfare, and you pray for generations, okay? Whatever your thing's doing, that's what it is. How hey, you become like God? I'll father you. I'm your good father, and I'll father you the way you should go. And you rest in it was my idea before the foundation of the world. You've said yes. You've said, God is so good that he will father me into being like him. I was like, that's who you think I am. Well done. That's exactly who I am, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cause you 
the will and to act according to my good purpose. I'm going to finish what I started. It's a rest. It's a rest. Okay, you're over here. So he's going to make you like him, which is baptism of fire, that seraphim that, that Jess was talking about. <laughs> you're going to pass through that dude. <laughs> okay. And he's going to sort you out. <laughs> and sometimes that's great. And other times that's really not good. But you're dealing with ancient DNA. And in your DNA, there are some things like, if Jesus was here, I'd rip his beard out. There's some really angry stuff in there. Yeah, and other stuff too, stuff that really despises God. You don't know you've got it. Why? Because if you go to church and you go and you tithe, then tick, everything's done. It's never confronted. When God takes all these support networks away from you, all these actions and performances, it's just you and him. <laughs> you've got nothing to come by except his character alone and his acceptance alone. From that place of a complete acceptance, he can show you things which are always inside you and he can remove them from you. He's going to remove them from the earth. He's going to take those giants from the land. In fact, he's going to get you to do it in cooperation with him. You can take those giants, that bad DNA, that DNA that says, I want to hurt God or God never talks to me or anything that is not that you are the beloved son of God, whom I'm well pleased. As you remove all, anything that's not that, God can trust you with things, trust you with his things. But you are that thing already. All you're doing is removing it from your land, these giants, this bad DNA, okay? You're removing it from the land. And these bad DNA, everything is based on sin, guilt, and shame, which came through sin, guilt and shame. Guilt, I've done wrong, okay? Hey, we've got that one right, okay? The blood of Christ pays everything. I've done wrong. Jesus can forgive you, okay? Uh, and done. I'm forgiven for robbing the bank. Forgiven. You know, I didn't tithe for the first 10 years of my life. Forgiven. Whatever. Whatever your knowledge of good and evil is that your conscience is conscious of. The blood of Christ can fix it up. I'm, I, uh, I, oh, let's not talk about sins. <laughs> not, they're naughty things. Sin can take care, of it, take care of it. Guilt, I've done something wrong. Shame, there's something wrong about me. And this is what the church has fundamentally missed. Because if there's not something fundamentally wrong about you, you probably don't need them so much. <laughs> you probably don't need their ministry, you don't need their gifting, you don't need their building. Oops. <laughs> what was that, God? Did God just speak to me? <laughs> Joseph Jara. Joseph Jara. Because um, all ministry is to reconcile man to God. The New Testament, it's only one ministry, the ministry of reconciliation. The fivefold ministry are there to build you the fullness of the stature of Christ. Why? It, so that's the, there to make you exactly like Christ. If they're not making you like Christ, they've got the gifting, but they're building you to something else. Their ministry, their atmosphere, their anything. Probably with very good intent. That's not the gospel. So the fivefold ministry is there to build you into the fullness of of the stature of Christ. Why? So that you won't be taken by every wind of doctrine. Every wind of doctrine, you mean what Satan's saying? No, no, no. Not demonic doctrine. Doctrine. Good doctrine. So you don't get taken by the prophetic movement, you don't get taken by the warfare movement, and the glory and grace movement, and then the, the courts of heaven movement, and the mystic movement, and any other movement. You don't join the movement. Every wind of doctrine. Sons don't get taken by the wind of doctrine. If the risen Christ was here, and someone says, hey, there's gold dust breaking out in Canada. We should go. That's amazing. If you're the risen Christ, you'd be like, mm, yeah, it is amazing, but that's just part of what I already have. Or uh, you're the risen son of God, and someone says, hey, there's some guy that's preaching that says we're saved by grace. We should all move, at, move there, move everything to there, and invest in that. Uh, yeah, no, I'm... I'm I'm the risen glorified Christ, you know, you. But it's by grace you can receive salvation. Yeah, I received the fullness of Christ. I can't deserve it. But it's grace. We should go to the grace movement. No, no, no. Or the spiritual war. We should go and do spiritual warfare. And you know what? We can take out demons. Yeah, yeah, I'm the glorified Christ. I don't even talk to demons. They run away from me. I never see them. No, but we can learn about all the hierarchies and we can forgive the land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm Christ. These are true. And 
God gives pastors to people where they're at. Okay? And so these people who are preaching this stuff, they get it from God? Yeah. Because God's going to give those people who are going to stay here or here ministers. That's not your problem. You're not going to stay in the desert. You're not going to stay on Mount Sinai. You're crossing the Jordan and you're going to Canaan. And you're going to be fathered into it by our promise. And if you become the risen Christ, you're not going to get taken by all these winds of doctrines. They come in, praise God. It's the truth of your kingdom, your father's kingdom. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. I'm looking at it from this point of view. Does Jesus have to do that? Yes or no? If yes, then I'm going to do it. If no, I've got an option. I'm going to use it if I need it. I'm going to use turmeric, <laughs> turmeric, whatever you call it, if I need it. Oregano, oregano. I'm going to use spiritual warfare if I need it. I'm going to use the gifts if I need it. I am. I'm definitely going to use it. Okay? If I need it, I'm going to do it. But I'm anchored here. And eventually, as I start believing the word, my need for these things will fall off because creation from our worldview is in three parts. Okay. This is particle form atoms. Okay. And above this is waveform subatomic. So this is Newtonian physics. This is quantum physics. This is affected by the physical body. This is affected by the soul. Waveform is affected by the soul. We can affect the performance of subatomic particles by human intent. They change what they do according to a human observer, a soul's intention. Particle form, wave form, word form. Word is the substrate reality to all creation. It all came from word. God spoke a word. Jesus, the word. All things are made through him and for him. This is all made of word. Word becomes wave when it hits creation, and wave becomes particle. And it's all holy. It's holy all the way through. But this has been subject to frustration and corruption, not willingly. So we, mature sons of God, can bring this word form, our spirit, spirit and word, into here. We dictate it and we bring it down by changing and believing it. We're going to bring this down. How? By believing a word. Believing a word. So you can only become this being, how much would you have to pray? How much would you have to fast? How good would you have to be? Become the living Christ, the glorified Christ on the earth, one with him, his exact representation, the very body of the head, the bride, equally yoked bride, not unequally yoked, equally yoked bride. What would you have to do? You can't. You can only receive it as a gift. So your $10,000 that you want for Israel, <laughs> the trouble is religion just presents to you what you could achieve on your best day, but no more. Okay? So if, if you can get up every morning to do an hour's prayer, it will give you that, plus praying for the peace of Jerusalem. All right. Get up to my hour of prayer, and I'll pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Plus, plus uh, praying for your leaders. Okay, and do that. Da, 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 da. And plus tearing for revival. Okay, every morning. Da, 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 da. Plus 10% of the gross of your income. Okay, da, da, da. plus serving the poor. Okay, da, 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 da. then what you can achieve on your best day, you can do that on your best day, but on your best day, because one day you're going to fail. When you fail, it's your fault because you can do it on your best day. <laughs> but won't give you any more. As soon as it becomes impossible, it needs to become a gift. And that's the cruelty of religion. You can get $5,000 to get Israel. But you don't need to achieve it as a son of God. You can use sowing and reaping. You can use Facebook. You can use anything. But can you receive it from your father as a son of God because of your pure righteousness? Because when you receive it that way, that's what you give away. If I got through fasting and you come to me and you need $5,000, I'll say, all right, go fast, bro. Do you give what you have? Everything reproduces after its own kind. Or if I got it through tithing or sowing and reaping, so I'm reap. I give you what I have with good intention. But if I get it through being the father's son and my DNA, I go to the throne of grace in my time of need and receive what I need, then that's what I give to you. You need $5,000, you can boldly go to God and ask for it. And he will, he will father you into it. He will father you into it. And you get $5,000 straight away, you get $5,000 in a year. Because right now it's going to hurt you. <laughs> but he will father you into it purely a relationship 
for you received a word which gave you righteousness forever. So word, we want, we want to go on to rest. To do all these things, especially these amazing things that Joseph's talking about. If you're not rest, you don't come to your new creation, it will become a burden to you. And you'll engage the level of truth that's been taught to you that you can achieve on your best day. On your best day, you do it again. Best day, do it again. Best day, do it again. And when you don't do it, it's your fault because you can do it <laughs> on your best day. You can qualify yourself for it on your best day. Christ qualifies you because he's given you his very self. He is your righteousness. He's your sanctification. He is your doorway in. <laughs> he's given you himself. Wherever Jesus can walk in and out, you can walk in and out, but he's going to father you into it. You're not going to jump through the window. You're going to be invited in. He's going to mature you to govern these things. So we want to enter rest. So anything that's amazing that came to earth, anything that's like from heaven that's amazing, was done at rest. So creation happens at rest. No one, Adam didn't ask to be created. It just happened to him. Ultimate rest. Okay. Now, how did, what was happening to Adam when Eve was created? We were separated, Eve, Adam and Eve, I should say. He was sleeping at rest. Um, what, what was Abraham doing when God cut the covenant to be good to him forever based on God's character alone? He was asleep. <laughs> he was out. What was Jacob doing when he saw heaven? He was asleep. He's out. Everything is given at rest. There's so many examples. Jesus in the boat, asleep. Jesus says, I have nowhere to lay my head. Son of God, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of God has nowhere to lay his head. Okay? Lay his head. When Jesus died on the cross, it says, and he laid his head. The exact same phrase. He died. And the work on earth, okay, Jesus went on and did some stuff, was done at rest. And now we enter into that rest. Now it is done. If you want something amazing to happen from heaven, no flesh can be involved because then that's corrupted. It must come from the glory. It must come from heaven. Okay. So Jesus says, strive to enter. Hebrews says, strive. If you have entered Christ's rest, you have ceased from your strivings and your works. Yep. So strive to enter that rest or you will enter disobedience. What disobedience? You will do something. You don't believe a word. And that thing you do is sin. It's the knowledge of good and evil. It brings death. You'll engage in some sort of spiritual truth, but not from rest to qualify yourself. Pay weight. You want wages. I want return for my thing rather than receiving it out of my nature. So the only way for it to be rest is to believe a word, a word that was spoken. Now, a word is so important because God reveals himself as invisible word because he is spirit. Even though people see him and see aspects of him and see revelations of him, he says, Old Testament and New Testament, you can't see me. I'm invisible because he is spirit. Okay, and that's how he's teaching us how to engage with him and bring it into creation. Okay, very important point. If you're going to bring it into creation, it must come from invisible word. Now, if I was invisible and you couldn't touch me or taste me or perceive me, the only way I could communicate to you is by my word. That's how you would know me. And that's how God, in his wisdom, when all wisdom and intellect, okay, uh, has revealed himself to us. Believe in what he says, because that is who he is. His word and his spirit, because he's revealed himself in no other way, how he explains himself, when he reveals his actual self, means revealed in creation, all those things. When he's showing his actual being, it's just word. It's just a word that is spoken. It could be a rima word. It could be an angel could visit you. You could see an aspect of it in creation. It could be a revelation from the heart. It could be from the Logos word revealed. It could be from a sermon. But the aspect of God or dream or God speaking directly to you, but it's him. It's him is the word. Now, when you don't believe a word, you don't believe truth. You don't believe God at his very core. When God speaks, he's revealing his very self. And to not believe that is the cosmic crime. 
and not believe his nature. God's love language is to be believed. That's it. If you believe it, you will do those things. God's love language is to be believed. So Adam and Eve were given all of creation to govern. The very thing that we're, the church doesn't believe we're we're doing that yet. (laughs) Okay, Adam and Eve. But it's given us that to trade into, that to govern, that to, um, to bring about on the earth. Okay, now Adam and Eve had that, and through relationship, without shame, a shame that says there's something wrong about me, there's something wrong about you, then you have to address that using knowledge of good and evil. Either you run away or you work hard for it. Okay, but the new creation re- eliminates shame because you, there's not something fundamentally wrong about you, you're fundamentally divine and lovable and righteous. Okay, so that's how Adam and Eve were. Fundamentally divine, lovable, righteous, perfect. They had their own righteousness, which they gave away. But they were living in without shame before God. Known in innocence. Absolute innocent. Okay? And then the devil comes along and says, well, the serpent comes along and says, did God really say? Because the only way to untangle you from this, which is always yours, is a different word. To doubt, to change the color, pervert, twist, whatever, a perfect word. The very person of, God, of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Okay? And they doubt the word. Well, then when doubting the word, they don't believe they have it. If you don't have it, you will do something to get it. The knowledge of good and evil. And by knowledge of good and evil, you either disqualify yourself or qualify yourself and both abandon heaven. You can't do any of those things. Only Christ qualifies you. Why will God give you $10,000? Christ. $20,000? Christ. Kill you? Christ. Uh, why will God give you a, uh, you just lost your second marriage, you want to get married again? Why would God do that for you? Christ. will father you into it. Christ. The word spoken. Word incarnate. That's why. So you believe the word. Okay? So Adam and Eve were supposed to believe God's word, that he was that good to them. Yep, and then be fathered into it without shame. They didn't believe the word. With the knowledge of good and evil, and knowing good and evil brings in guilt, you do naughty things, and shame. You know why you don't deserve it. Leave that behind and return to innocence. Your nature, your new nature is innocent forever. It hasn't broken any laws because it's in love. In love, there are no laws. It's outside time. It's innocent forever. It's the innocent blood of Christ innocent forever and you can boldly go to the throne of grace in your time of need or any time okay now god works by a word now this is a very very important concept all through scripture old testament and new testament god deals with you on what you say you set the parameters on how god deals with you as far as manifesting on the earth and god's always 100 agape good to you but what you live in depends on what you say by a choice of your will. Excuse me. By a choice of your will. Your will, what you say, what you agree to. Okay? So the Israelites walk around the desert. God says, you can take that land. You can take it. Yep. And they say, mm, the giants are too big and we're grasshoppers. We can't take that land. And God says, you said, I brought you to the desert to die. No, like, whoa, 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 whoa. We didn't say that. We said, that's too scary. We can't do it. God says, no, no, no. I said you could. You're saying that's not true. Now, God's very secure. It's like, oh, what? Okay. God's very secure. But word is substrate reality of all existence. So that's what God is. His spirit, that is word. Okay. And so they've said that God wouldn't do that. The very crime of Adam and Eve. And so that whole generation have to die out. They didn't believe a word. And what happened? There's two good spies and ten bad spies. Ten bad reports. Now, can you think of ten things that would make you not righteous? <laughs> What's ten things, ten standards that you could look at and go, I'm disqualified for God's goodness. What ten things come to mind? Yep. Okay. So the knowledge of good and evil, the law, you can't go in, but you can go in by 
I promise. God said you could. Yeah. New Testament examples. Uh, it's all scriptures based on believing the invisible word. God says, go and attack that camp with 300 people. <laughs> okay. It's based on believing a word. All of it. Right, right through. Uh, New Testament, like a good example, positive example is, you don't have to come to my house. You can just say the word and they'll be healed. And Jesus is like, such great faith. I haven't seen all of Israel. He set the parameters. Other people say, if I just touch the cloak, they'll be healed. So according to their faith, they were healed. Not their faith healed them. Their faith set the parameter and the dynamic of how they were healed. Yep, according to your faith. Yeah, if you come to my house, just say the word, okay? Or uh, in the parable, um, we hid our talent in the ground because we heard you were a hard taskmaster. Oh, I'm a hard taskmaster, am I? Well, according to your faith, so be it, okay? Asked by our confession of his nature depends on how we relate to him on the earth and what's expressed on the earth. Now, he does sovereign things like sending his son, okay? We didn't ask for that. He did that, okay? But we want to become mature, we need to change this soil. And this soil says, he is good. And when you say he is good, you're going to say, his word is true. If his word is true, you cannot engage your behavior of good and evil to receive it. If it's true, and I'm going to be fathered into it, and being fathered into it will change my behavior, I promise you. You're not changing to receive. You are perfect, and God wants to give you these things. Everything is yes, everything yes, amen, in Christ. Just believing a word, an invisible word. You believe the invisible word, you receive it, okay? And until you believe it fully, God has given you things here and here, in the 60-fold and 30-fold, until that day. Now, Adam and Eve, if they did not eat, would they have died? No, okay? Because food was beautiful to look at, that was for pleasure, beautiful to look at, and useful to eat. When the devil showed the food to Eve, it became useful to eat and beautiful to look at. He perverted it, okay? Can we use first, okay? Not pleasure. We are being returned to our Edenic state, but better. We can't lose it. Adam and Eve could lose it. We can't lose it. So we're in this state, here in Eden. If we don't eat, we will not die. If I don't eat, I won't die. Do I believe that? Clearly not. <laughs> Clearly not. And I've gone to uh, try and live off my spirit several times to varying levels of success, okay? I've had two successful times out of seven. <laughs> I've had five dismal failures, horrendous failures, okay? But it's true, okay? And uh, in that um, still face God, that message on YouTube from As Years Ministries, um, I talk about my process and my learning, okay? So because I, I'm not living off this yet, I have a different record in me, my soul and my body is still very much attached to food and sustenance, okay? This stuff is useful and this is useful. So when I receive, when I, have, when I have food, I say, thank you, food. You are enjoyable. I'm returning to this proper state. You're here for my, my enjoyment and you're useful to eat. And Christ is my source. So when I'm slowly transitioning my body back to living off my spirit, it's very hard to do in Alabama because I keep giving you food. Okay? Soul food. Soul food. <laughs> so true. We all use food to regulate your emotions. Me more than most people, okay? Okay, I, I use food to regulate my emotions. So when I start moving this way, I find all these emotions I never knew existed. <laughs> on the pole, Jesus has beat out. <laughs> You'd be surprised what's in you. Hangry is a, is a, is a real thing. <laughs> what I do is I take communion in the morning, and communion is three realms. It's spirit, because you're taking in the spirit, the body and blood of Christ. We'll get back to that. And then you believe in your soul, you confess with your mouth, and it hits your body. 
and in your body you're taking actual physical things. So your body's engaged, your soul's engaged, your spirit's engaged. Okay? When you take communion, here I'm taking bread and wine. Here I'm believing it in my soul. I'm making a choice or emotionally I believe it or I'm making a will to learn to believe it. And, but in heaven, I'm actually taking in the body and blood of Christ, which is not body and blood. Blood is the life force. So I'm taking in the very life force of resurrection himself. I'm taking immortality. Believe it in my heart and confess it in my mouth. Because confessing in your mouth brings it into the particle form. Okay? So I bring it down. I'm taking in the body of Christ. I'm taking the body of resurrection, of life, of love himself. Jesus, the word. I'm taking word, okay? And it's filtering down here and here. Now, 60-fold and 30-fold, the unseen and the seen, everything created is made from the word. If I need something in my soul or something in my body, I've got it in word form. We know here that if I take in uh, mercury, oh, not mercury, magnesium and zinc, it goes in, my body needs mercury and zinc and calcium, and it makes molecules out of it, raw materials. I take in proteins, my body goes, I need those proteins, takes it apart, back together again, protein for protein. Very inefficient, okay? But I know that. But if I take in a word of which proteins are made out of, it could be any of those things. Now, we know that if we eat six meals a day, we have lots of food, lots of calories, we need five meals a day, and now people are saying, we only need one meal a day. And it's very healthy to eat one meal a day. Very, very healthy thing to eat one meal a day. Then we find out that science can make this one big meal into a bar this big. And so, no, no, we can make it into a bar this big. This one little bar can be a food for a day. All the calories there, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Well, a piece of bread this big, a little cup this big, <laughs> From the spirit, it's all word. And it can be anything you need. You need anything in your soul? You need anything in your body? You need, you need mercury? Not mercury. <laughs> magnesium? You need magnesium? Well, word can become magnesium. Word can become hormone replacement therapy. Word can become calcium. Word can become collagen. Word can become forgiveness. Word can become joy. Word can become anything you need in your soul. I wasn't given this as a child. Yeah, okay. But that thing is made out of word. You can have it. I need this intelligence. I need to be more intelligent in this area. <laughs> well, word can become intelligence. It can become neural pathways. Everything's made out of the word. And receiving communion, you get everything you need. So when I go through these periods of transitioning through uh, and I want to start living off my spirit, I'm getting better and better at it because every time I do it, every time you do it, you run into unbelief. Things, a different word in your body, and you come up against it. Poof, and when you come up against it, for me, I collapse hard. Like, oh, and I emotionally collapse and physically collapse. But I get up again and I start again probably twice a year. I try this. <laughs> okay. And um, I've had the last two years have been very good years. I've done once in, what's it now, 2020, 2018, and once in 2019. Okay. Normally in November, for some reason, I do it in November. And uh, so I have communion, okay? Let's say, is these things. Oh, and Amazon uh, will only give you groceries at the moment. Guess what is registered as groceries? Communion cups are registered as groceries. I did an experiment the other day, and they, they will give you communion cups. So I take my bread and my wine, okay? And I step into heaven, or I know I'm divine, whatever, and I take in word form. I take resurrection himself. I drink his life. I drink life itself, eternal, immortal life. I take in word form and I call it something. And I can call it the food for the day if I believe it. If I don't believe it's the food for the day, I'll say this is breakfast. But don't believe it's breakfast. <laughs> I say, you just go where your faith's at. Okay, so let's say I'm starting off and I say, this is everything I need for the day. I let it go as long as that my soul believes it. And by lunchtime, I don't believe it anymore. So I have lunch. And next day, I do it again, and I have it for lunch. I have it for breakfast. I feel good at lunch. And lunch, I have another one. You know, <laughs> do it again. Refresh. Okay, this is lunch. I feel good at dinner, but I need to eat at dinner. Why? Well, because I'm bored. You find out if you don't eat, you get bored very easily. <laughs> uh, and I'll soothe my soul. I'll eat them. Eventually, you do it for lunch, you know, breakfast, lunch, dinner. And you're slowly transitioning across. 
Well, you can do this for anything. Food, health, provision. Okay, we'll talk about provision afterwards. But if you live the spirit by a word, a promise, okay, that he is your life, he, um, he quickens your mortal body, he is food indeed, his body and blood is food indeed, it's just a word. Do you believe that promise? Not yet. But as you hear it, like you're hearing things now, and the things now possible for you that weren't possible 20 minutes ago, because you heard a word. So at rest, you're qualified for this, and you're moving to word. You're coming off your soul and your body, because your soul and body work with the knowledge of good and evil. What's the right thing to do? What's the bad thing to do? Eat sugar? Don't eat sugar. Eat carrots? Don't eat carrots. Eat eggs? Don't eat eggs. Okay? Well, body and blood comes from outside creation, so there's no corruption. It's the only perfect food, and you call it something, okay? Because word becomes wave, becomes particle. Yeah. And so when I first started, I'd have maybe 20 of these a day because my soul gets upset because I'm very emotional, especially with food. And so I have it, and then and now later I have another one. Now later I'm a little bit bored to get up to do something, I have another one. I'm just trying to teach my soul what's always true. This is food indeed, okay, based on the word. And slowly over time, my body will transition over. Okay. And so I'm living off this, okay. And where I can't live off this completely, Praise God for good emotions, okay? And no condemnation. And praise God for steak. And praise God for um, digestive, um, what do you call probiotics. And praise God for uh, vitamins. And then praise God for minerals. And praise God for Western medicine, okay? And Christ is my healer. And I'm having this when Christ is one who makes herbs work <laughs> and Christ is what makes soul healing work and slowly I'll remove those things very slowly within my uh, rest according to the, the work doing the work the word must do the work I just hear the word again hear the word again and then a frequency changes out it comes comes a reality to you and it's a rest achieved at rest I don't have to fast or pray or get hands laid on me to achieve this. It's in my nature. I'm learning to, my nature. My nature, how do I bring this divine nature to earth? I promise. I promise. Okay. So, uh, how long have you been going for here? Oh, oh yeah. Now, yeah, okay. So, provision works the same way. So, uh, Joseph can attest to this. I um, have done a lot of uh, things without any money, but based on the promise. Okay. I was invited into it. And, uh, and I started uh, traveling the world without any money. And then after a while, any money in the bank. And then I started uh, taking people with me because <laughs> I knew it. But I didn't know it when it first started. When it first started, um, when it first started, uh, I didn't believe it. Okay. So uh, I am going to end this session by telling stories about my transitioning to word form. Okay. And I'll use finance as an example. I've done it with food sometimes. Health, I still struggle with because I was born into sickness and I don't really have a record of health. I don't even know what it is. I don't even know what I'm believing for. And I accept certain levels. I go, oh, today was a pretty good day. Thank you, God. And so I have to have, have, to have my mind transformed in that area. Okay? But it's all different areas. You think <laughs> that God's good to one area. You go, that's who God is forever. But no, no, we compartmentalize, you know. I trust God for finances, but not for relationships. <laughs> I trust God for relationships, but not for, for protection. <laughs> so, you know, we, we, that's, that's how we work as humans. And everyone's got different souls. They've never had different childhoods. And your dad was really good to you and gave you money all the time, okay, but never talked to you. You trust God for provision. You don't trust in intimacy. Okay, so everybody's different. It's all right. And God knows and he's going to father you into it. You can take that land. You can. You can. If you believe the word, a word alone, that no flesh can have it. So, I need a word for provision. You only need one verse because I was memorizing all these verses. I had all these flashcards, remembering verses, remembering verses, remembering verses. I had a dream. And God said, Chris, you just need one verse in a dream. That's what he said to me. You just need one. <laughs> like communion does everything. One word. It, Joseph said it's 70 layers deep. <sighs> like one word. Okay. So, uh, I, need, I need a concept in the word. That's for me. That's just me. So um, the concept for me, Adam and Eve, because we understand Eden. Adam and Eve, did they work to live? 
No. Did they work? Yes, they certainly did. They were the garden and make that garden how they wanted it. And they go talk to God, learn about him, and then they chose how they wanted the garden to be. And they named the animals. Adam, when he was male and female together as one composite whole, named the animals, gave them his nature, gave them their nature in his image. That's why I giraffe giraffes. They're like, ah, oh, God, giraffes. That's fantastic. No, Adam, well done. Good work, Adam. <laughs> Adam, some other things? Not so convinced. <laughs> That's been subject to frustration. Okay, we're yearning for us to release it. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, let's not go there. So, um, mature sons. So, we, I'm saying this to become mature sons by believing word alone. That's what, that's what this whole thing's about. Because then you can be at rest and become like him. And from there, you can express your will. But if you're trying to attain something you already have and you express your will, you'll be mixed. I'm trying to use very practical examples. So food was one. Okay, I started living off communion. And over time, I needed less and less food. And then uh, I did a whole month. I didn't lose any weight. <laughs> you lose that sugar salt weight first. And then... You live a communion for a whole week, for a whole month, and your weight stays the same, okay? And, and I talked to, uh, I think it was Kirby, and Kirby's like, yeah, that's cool, you're framing up. You said, this, this is all the calories I need for the day. So it is. But, oh, fair enough. If a calorie intake equals calorie output, everything stays the same. Because he's saying that's what you have, is exactly what you said it was, Chris. You created that. Wow. It's very specific. It goes by your words. Ah, oh, you think that's what I am? And that's why I am. Congratulations. That's how God works. So you, you win the bounds of his word and his nature. So food is one story. I can tell you my successes and failures about food. I started having communion about 30 times a day. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, I start, then I started having it one every meal. I could believe it was every meal. And then I started having it once a day. Yep. And then after about week three, I, went, I got really sick and got into these big fasting symptoms. Um, very short story because the makeup of my physical body that I inherited, um, I can't fast. I actually go into self toxification very quickly. I can't even intermittent fast. When I'm my normal self, I must eat breakfast, I must eat dinner. Because when I start, if I don't eat for long enough, my body starts healing itself, but it actually starts to poison itself. It's awful, awful. So I can't, <laughs> if I get this wrong, it only takes a day to find out. And so and one day I was, I was in Spain, I would walk in the mountains on no food. I rang my parents. I was just showing them where I was. I was telling them I've been the healthiest I've ever been. And, um, and then about a couple of days later, I started feeling really sick. I had pain in my kidneys, that, that fasting headache. You normally get on day two, I started having it then. Because after three days of not eating, I just started fasting symptoms. But I had communion. And I thought, what? what's going on, God? And I was actually offended and angry. <laughs> my first response to most offense is anger. <laughs> my gut response, what's going on, God? I'm doing what you told me to do. That's my, that's my instant response. And, um, and God said, you didn't call it. You just took communion. There was no intention. I'm very intentional. You didn't call it. You didn't call it your food for the day. I went, chonk, 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 I'm out. <laughs> and uh, God's like, no, no. You need to be like me. From your heart's desire, right with your words. Yep. So uh, that's food. Okay. And then, so if I have this, if I believe that this is enough for me for a whole year, then it is. But I don't, okay? I got to a day. You can get a day, what, a week. But I don't. My soul freaks out. That doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make physical law sense. And I get bored. I want to eat and I want to taste stuff. You know, da, 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 all these things come in, okay? So it is what you call it, but only in bounds of what you currently believe. And that's okay because believing comes by hearing. It's a free gift. And if you want to be like God, he will father you into it. He will father everyone differently. So back to income or to provision. Adam and Eve, Garden of Eden, all they did was tend the provision God gave them. The, night, the garden grew. Creation as God eventually grew. It just brought stuff to them. Here it is. Here's more. Here's more. Now govern it. Govern creation. Govern provision. Govern the provision that's coming. It's a rest. It's a rest. Not toiling for it. Not working for it. It's coming to them. That's how God designed it. Creation responds to sons of God. Okay? If it doesn't, it gets in trouble, as we see later. And then Adam and Eve went from innocence, so creation just gives to them, to knowledge of good and evil. Now they know why, if they deserve it or they don't, 
and they're under a curse. And God says, creation will no longer just give to you. Now, by the sweat of your brow, you'll work against the thorns and the thistles. And man's been doing it ever since. Even to this day, man still does that. Works by sweat of his brow against the thorns and the thistles. Yep. Second Adam came, last Adam came, he had thorns and thistles, went to his brow, the blood, which is a divine, multidimensional, before the foundation of the world substance, touched that bang. A higher words come in. Love has undone that, that curse and the covenants, new covenants come in. And now, if you choose in your heart, believe in your soul, believe in your heart, that that's true, you can now return to God providing for you and all creation must respond. Now, Jesus wasn't under that curse. He still lived by the law and he fulfilled the law. Well, he's the son of God. He's walking the earth. He sees a fig tree and it's not the time of figs. Not the time of figs. It's winter season, whatever, okay? And Jesus says, curse you for not giving the son of God figs when I want it. He's allowed to him. He laid down his life for all creation. So he's allowed to govern it as he wants. That's love. And he cursed it because nature was supposed to give him a fig. And it didn't. That's perverse. That's perverse. Everything's supposed to provide for him. Fish in the net, please. Dunk. Fish with gold. Yep. Dunk. Whatever he wants. Man with donkey. <laughs> Whatever. Anything he wants. Creation's supposed to respond to him. He can because he's laid his life down for it. He's only doing what he sees his father doing. It lives by word. It lives by word. It's the highest form. The all created 60 fold invisible realm soul stuff and all physical particle stuff must respond because he's here. If you're here, you engage on this, that law level. If you're here, you engage on gravity and friction and entropy. If you're here, you engage on sowing and reaping and blessing and cursing and forgiveness and intention, a uh, soul intention. Here, you engage on word. Given the creative force, like your father, believe, speak, create, like Joseph was talking about before. But from this heart, you'll be fathered into it, okay? You can do sneaky ones here, do sneaky ones here, but they're Ishmael's for a promise. Get rid of them. I'm going to be over here. So you'll move over here for provision. You'll start working by the sweat of your brow. Forget that. Want it? Over. Get rid of it. Okay? How? Slowly. <laughs> the same way you do it for food. So we do it for anything. Okay? Um, unless that's your personality of the faith. You know, some people, you know, have broken lungs and broken legs. They believe God and they go for a run. Bang, and they're running. <laughs> okay, Good for them. I, that's not me, man. I, uh, I'm like, slowly, slowly take the land. And that's what God said to the Israelites anyway. Slowly, slowly take the land. Otherwise, it will overcome you. Okay. So I'm slowly taking the land. So I left uh, Adelaide with a few thousand Australian dollars. Let's say, let's say it was 5,000 Australian dollars. I got to London. And it's now two and a half thousand pounds. <laughs> and it costs more than 500 pounds a week to live in London. And uh, so I chewed through my money. And then I, uh, I got to uh, France and I was about to go home. I had a thousand Australian dollars left. It cost a thousand dollars to get back to Australia. And to get back to Australia, broke. Okay. And I'm driving back to the airport. And I said, God, this can't be it. This, is, this, is, this has to be something else. Like I've left ministry. This is after I left ministry. I left everything to follow you and your voice and become a son. Uh, all I did was go to England for two weeks and spend my savings and to France. I'm like, this can't be it. I said, God, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to go to Spain and Italy. And I got back to my apartment and I said, after dinner, I'll book a ticket home, unless you say differently. Before dinner, I opened my laptop and on Facebook, a little a message came up. It said, hi, Chris, my name's Brian. We knew each other when we were four years old. I see you in France. Tomorrow, I land in Italy. I'm going through Spain and Italy. Would you like to come with me? I paid for everything. You might as well just join me in my apartments. And I went, right. So I got an invitation. This is on, okay? But I made the choice of will first. Yeah. And I said, this is possible. I said, really? You really believe I'll do that for you? Yes. And you know me. That's what I would do for you. Okay. So I go around Spain and Italy. As I go around through Spain and Italy, my money goes down, up, down, up, down, up. 
and close and close to zero because God's trying to take me as fast as my soul can go. Because fundamentally, I don't believe God is good to me because of shame. There's something wrong about me. Go do this for someone else. They're not going to do it for me. And this is really scary for me. Okay. Um, I'll actually live in a high level, high level of anxiety the whole time. When you go down, the check will come in. Money go down, and something else will come in. Down, up, down, up. So I didn't have enough money to go home anymore. So I can't fly home anymore. And I've got about, let's say I've got about $300 left at the end. I'm making that number up. There's like a very low amount. I can't go home. And my time in Spain is over because my friend's gone home. I think, God, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? What am I going to do? And there's no answer. When there's no answer, sometimes that means God's asking, what do you want to do? So I said, I want to go to Turkey. I always want to go to Turkey. So I'll go to Turkey. Is that what I do? Go to universe. You want to let me go to Turkey? So I bought my ticket to Turkey. I've got one night uh, accommodation. And I've got uh, about 10 euro in my pocket. So I land in Turkey. I get there and um, I'm in um, Istanbul, at Istanbul airport. And I, um, oh no, I had, I, I had like, let's say I had $50, or well, let's say I had $60. So I had $60 and I got there. I said, do you have your visa? I went, no. Said, well, that's $50, please. <laughs> okay, I'm 50. <laughs> so I have $10 left. I've already got my first night accommodation. And I'm going out, I'm going to Starbucks. I went there for a, a water. And I gave him the 10 euro because it came from um, Spain. I said, we don't accept euro here. I was like, at the airport, like, I'm, my soul was really anxious. I just then, like, this is my first time I've done this. I'm high level. I don't really believe God looks after me. I believe there's something faulty about me. I don't feel guilty. My theology is so good <laughs> that guilt's gone. But shame, does God really care for me? Really? was he brought me to the desert to die. Yep. And so, and then I went to buy the thing. They said, you can't get water here with that $10. And that was enough in itself for me to go, this is stupid. It's over. As soon as the per- person in front of me turned around, said, hi, welcome to my country. And he bought me the water from Starbucks and he handed it to me and walked off. Did he disappear? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, that was it. That was just enough. Just keep my emotions up because I'm being fathered into it. This child in the father way he should go. Other people, you might just go reckless abandon. Other people might be like, it's much, much slower. It's okay. This is God fathering his son. I did my first night there and I got up in the morning. I had to check out the hotel. I walked out the hotel with no money, <laughs> with my 10 euro. And now I am standing in the Istanbul streets with my luggage. Uh, I left my luggage at the hotel. I just told someone going out. My friend rings me and, who lives in Istanbul and says, where are you staying tonight? I said, oh, I haven't decided yet. Because you can't tell, I decided not to tell anyone. There's reasons for this. And they said, oh, my friend uh, has a room. You have a room at my friend's house. I'll ring him up. Brings back and says, yeah, you can, you can go to my friend's house. You know, it's, normally, it's like it's normally an Airbnb, but you can have it. They said it's free. Like, oh, great. So I use my $10. I call a taxi there. <laughs> Boom, out. And then I go to this place. And then that day, uh, um, I can't remember the story, but things happen. Like an old check came through from 12 months ago. Like my dad found it or, um, you know, some, things like that kept happening. And, um, and so the money will go up and down, up and down. And I went to check out of that place and they said, yes, I will give you a discount rate. I said, oh, sorry. I said, yeah, yeah. We don't be charged this much. We'll charge this much. This much we charge for Airbnb because you're going to charge you this much. So I actually got charged for that room for those four or five days. I'm like, oh, what? And then, Another thing happened, some money came through, I paid for it. And then um, I went to a place called Izmir on the, on the coast and I flew there and I only had enough money to get there, but not enough money to stay. I bought a ticket to Izmir because I couldn't stay in Istanbul and it was the cheapest flight. <laughs> a local domestic flight. Anyway, I went to dinner with a, with a friend that night and I said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Izmir tomorrow. I said, Izmir, really? That's amazing. I've got an old friend I haven't spoke to for five years. They ran me today. They're from Izmir. And they said, if any Christians are coming through, send them to my house. I'll pick them up. I went, right. <laughs> so I let Izmir, this guy, the chin, picks me up. 
I'll sleep at his house. So I've got a certain amount of money left. Now I'm an Izmir. And every day, because I need a word, so I don't have a testimony here. My soul doesn't believe it. So I need a testimony, I need a word. And scripture, I burnt out being a pastor. And scripture, I was over it, okay? I, the Bible was just like this thing that didn't work for me. And it has to work for you. And so it doesn't work for me. It was more shameful. I couldn't even look at it. But I knew it's true, so I needed, needed another way in. So on audio, I've got the, the, the diary of uh, George Mueller speaking to me. And George Mueller was a guy from the late 1800s, early 1900s. And he started an orphanage because he found like, he wanted to look after the kids. He, like, he, let's say he found a penny. So if God give me a penny, he can give me a dollars. And that, he never told people what he needed. And he went on with it. And story after story, he went from there to an orphanage, to two orphanages, to buying land, to architecturally designed like uh, manor houses that the orphans lived in. And over 100,000 orphans went through. And he never asked people for anything. And he told God. And here's the stories. There's no money. 1,000 orphans sit up their, um, 1,000 orphans sit up their table and they all sit their, their knife and fork waiting for the food to come in and there's no food. And they wait and they wait and they wait and something happens. A wedding gets cancelled. A, a, uh, a bakery truck breaks down. There's no order and they never missed a meal in like 30 years. Hundreds of thousands of children. They never told him what, what they needed. They only told God. All right, that's what I'm going to do. And the day comes. I give away my last piece of money. Okay, I bought pizza that night. I wake up in the morning, no money. This is it. This is the day. I'm switching. I'm so excited because George Mueller told me. <laughs> Not the Bible. I didn't believe the Bible. But I believe George Mueller. <laughs> and George Mueller told me that, I, that the Father never fails, never once. And when the Father comes through for you, that comes from Him alone, you didn't tell anyone, you only told God, you know the Father sees you, and that's the greatest joy in life. I was like, okay, I'm on. So I got up in the morning, I walked my tiny flat on top of the hill, went down, down, down. You do what you normally do, okay? That's the rule. Do what you normally do. And because uh, if you stay at home and don't eat, then that's not the face at all. <laughs> so you go on your normal day. What I normally do is go have breakfast on the coast. So I walk down to the coast, down, 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 down. I start walking to the cafe and something's going to happen. I'm going to find $100 on the ground. Somebody's going to come to me with my phone. I'm going to meet an old friend. You know, something's going to happen. I'm looking for it. I've heard, all the, I've heard about 100 George Miller stories. I'm waiting, walking along, walk along, getting closer, closer. And then I got to the entrance of the cafe I decided to go to. I had no money. And I couldn't go in. I froze and then this atmosphere of condemnation came around me. Can I describe it that way? Looking for agreement. And it is like, you are stupid. God doesn't see you. It doesn't work for you. And the feeling inside me was beyond torment. It was such a horrid feeling. I can't describe it, but it was so painful and so intense. I wanted it to go. You, have you ever burnt yourself and you put your hand in some water? You feel like, ah, oh, okay. But while it's burning, it's so intense, you don't know what to do. Emotion was like that, okay? A word came around me, looking for agreement. Did God really say, I owe this son of God? So I'm standing there under this intense pressure, intense pressure, and I knew by revelation, but not God's revelation, I knew that if I said, it doesn't work for me, or it didn't work, this pressure, this pain would go. I felt so stupid. I just want to say, oh, it doesn't work. I knew this pain would leave. In the same way you put your burnt hand in cold water, go, oh, I knew it was this big relief. Well, I've been taught by the Word of Faith people. I've been taught by Carrie Blake. If something non-biblical is happening, shut up. Just don't say anything. So I just stood there like this. I'm sitting outside the cafe with no money in Turkey. And a thousand thoughts going through. You really thought that God would look after you? You thought they were miracles? Those checks were coming in on those days anyway. You thought it was miracles? Then you said money in the bank. It's just savings. You thought it was a miracle? It just so happened that person called you up. All these thoughts coming through and it was tormentuous. I thought, don't say anything, don't say anything, don't say anything. God, what, 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 what? I probably said God. I definitely didn't say dad. I said God. <laughs> what, what, what? And then 
I remembered, this thought came to me, that my natural father had given me 80, English, 80 British pounds. And all this time living off no money, a couple of months, I hadn't spent it. I can't remember spending it. I thought, surely I had. Surely, surely I would have cashed it in. I couldn't remember cashing it in. That's the only thing I could think of. So without saying anything, under this pressure, I just blanked myself, like test pattern. Hmm. Walked back up the hill, back up to my room. Under this pressure, that I knew I said, it doesn't work for me. It would just go away. So just hold, hold, like frame heart, hold. And then I'll go through all my um, clothes, take my, everything apart, everything looking for this $80. Like, God told me that, am I making this up? And it wasn't there. And then it wasn't, this doesn't work for me. It was anger. Okay. The first one was like, if you take a child to the supermarket and let's go your hands and he turns around, he can't see you. Okay. He feels so alone. He just crushes. Like then he starts to cry. As a, wherever I was, 37, whatever, I just crushed. I was like, I'm so by myself. God does not see me. He doesn't look after me. I felt myself crushing, going down. And it was a horrible feeling. I could get out of it. I could get out of it by saying it doesn't work. Well, now that feeling, anger came when it wasn't up there. And the anger was, see, you don't look after me. See, this is what I'm telling you about. See, it was real anger. And I knew I wanted to, I wanted to tell God that he does not perform his word, that he is not good to me. He's good to people, but he's never been good to me. And this anger was there. I was held it. Hold. Oh, I was really angry. Like I wanted to hurt God. I wanted him to feel the same pain I was feeling. This is the pain I've had for 37 years. I want you to feel it. You've always abandoned me. You've never come through for me. You don't see me. And all these thoughts are there. And this, it's a real thing. It's an atmosphere. And that's the devil saying, are you really the son of God? Did God really say? It must be the agree with him being the father, not the good father being the good father. So I didn't have an answer. I didn't want to say that. So I just sat there in silence. And I looked down. And beside me, there was a, here's one. There was a little, little uh, eye patch case from Singapore Airlines. And it's the only thing I hadn't opened. So I looked down. I pick it up. I open it. And inside was the 80 British pounds. And I cried. I cried. I cried. It is real. He does see me. <laughs> I went down to the legal gold dealer and he took 10 pounds out because he didn't recognize it. And from 70 pounds, he probably gave me 50 pounds of English lira. <laughs> and with that 50 pounds, I said, God, I want to go to the seven churches of Revelation, which are in Turkey. I looked them up and Ishmir is Sardinia. So I'd already started. And with that 50 lira, I went to all the seven churches uh, it's a very long story, so I can't go into it. But I just hand people, I show picture, p- people a picture of where I wanted to go on my phone. They put me in a bus, take me in my hand and just send me. And I went all around the countryside of Turkey. And then I got uh, in like Ephesus and all those places. And then I, I got to um, Isle of Patmos. And I, my last money on that, on that ferry to get out there and I paid for my accommodation already, and I paid for my ferry. I was landing there for two days without any money, couldn't buy food. And as I'm going there, I got a text from uh, a friend. He said, um, testing leads to perfection. And so I'm sending you 47 English pounds. <laughs> and when I got the pat I went it out, English pounds to euros, because it's Greece now. And I took out that 47 pounds. <laughs> I got to my room. It was room 407. Anyway, I got all the way around and ended up in Cappadocia. And some more money came in. Ended up in Cappadocia. I just want to say this to seal it off. Ended up in Cappadocia. And then uh, in Cappadocia is where all this teaching that Joseph's talking about now and I'm talking about was protected in Cappadocia. They all escaped to the desert to pr- protect that you were fully man, fully God. Everything, God became fully man, you could become fully God. He became everything you are, you become everything he is. That teaching was protected in Cappadocia. So I was there to honor that record. I paid for my five days apartment there, which was very expensive out there. But I paid for it, paid for my flight out. On my last day there, I didn't know how I was going to get home, but I knew God was going to come through. Anyway, 
and I, and I was very confident of that. I was excited to see because I've been doing it over and over and over again. What how God's going to get me back to Istanbul? Okay, and I go to the guy. I said, "I'll check out tomorrow. What time's check out?" He said, "12." He said, "You can pay me then." I was like, uh, "Pay you?" He goes, "Yeah." I go, "No, no, no. I paid on the internet." He goes, "No, no. You haven't paid yet." I said, "Yeah, no. I paid on Booking dot com." He goes, "No, no. In Turkey, you, you pay directly. Every hotel." I was like, "Really?" So like, yeah. I went back, picked my laptop, and that's true. I hadn't paid for the hotel. Now, I believe that God fly me home. That was like maybe $350. I could believe for $350. But I couldn't believe for $1,050, <laughs> whatever it was, for my six nights accommodation there in the middle of the desert. And that feeling came back to visit me. It came back at a, new, at a more opportune time. I ate with the Son of God. I said to God, okay, before I went to bed, I said, God, I spent my last $5 on a kebab. A Eurosa kebab. I said, God, I'm not going to pray tonight for two reasons. A, me going to sleep and not praying is the evidence of my faith. It's done. You've done with this. And if I do pray, I will judge my prayer. If it's a good prayer, I think I deserve it. If it's a bad prayer, I think I don't deserve it. It's knowledge of good and evil. I'm not going to pray. I'm going to go to bed. Went to bed thinking, I'm going to have awesome dreams tonight. It's going to be a great night. It's going to have awesome dreams. It's going to be fantastic. Wake up, no dreams. Check my laptop, no money. So I have breakfast in the hotel, which is part of the room that we're yet to pay for. Check it, it's at 12. Get back to my room, check my laptop, no money. I can't tell anyone. Okay, that's the rule. Because faith that hints is dead. Faith that hints is dead. Don't do that thing. Okay? I can't tell anyone. It must be my father on his character alone, by his word and his nature alone, by a, my ability to source funds on my own ability. So I went for a walk around Cappadocia. Beautiful, beautiful city. And then I got back to my hotel room at 11, I remember. I checked my laptop. No money. So I pack my bags. <laughs> we get everything ready. It takes half hour. I put it against the wall. It's 11.30. I check my bags. And I check my laptop. There's a note from my dad. My dad says, hey, Chris. How are you doing? Hope Turkey's good. Uh, I just remember that about uh, a few months ago, I gave your brother some money to fix his house up. I gave him $2,000. So to keep things, things even, I just sent you $2,000. Boom. $2,000. Now, my dad does not profess to be a Christian. <laughs> that's, that's all I'll say about that. And it's like 12 o'clock in the morning, 12 o'clock in the afternoon there, 11.30, which is whatever, 7.30 at night in Australia. So 7.30 at night, my dad goes, not a Christian, says, hang on, saying my, brother, my son some money to keep things even between the two sons. Instant transfer, because Australia to Australia, I have access to it. And I got the money and I cried again. Uh, Israel, uh, Israel. So that two thousand dollars, and then oh, lots of details. Went to Jordan, went to America, went to Birmingham. I met Joseph in Birmingham, and we went to Peru, and I went to Bolivia, back to Peru. That was six years ago today, I was working at orphanage. Six years ago today, I was working at orphanage in Peru. This day, and then uh, back to America, and then to um, Hawaii, which is still America. Then to Japan, and then to. Uh, Vietnam, then to Singapore, then to Hong Kong, then back to Australia. Yeah. And God had to move me from there to there. Okay. And part two, the, the absolute point of the story is enough to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> it's a knockout. It's going to open a whole other thing. The point is, I went from provision of what I could work hour by hour to achieve to off the promise of God alone. And I promise you this. It wasn't based on my character, because it wasn't good. It wasn't based on my attitude, because it wasn't good. My attitude was, you are unfaithful, I want to hurt you. Okay? That's not the attitude that attracts the anointing. <laughs> but I did make a call back to my will. God, I believe you could be as good to a very angry, disappointed son. So I was like, do you really believe I'd be that good to someone who's not tithing, not reading the Bible? who left the ministry, is very angry with me? Yeah, I do. And you're right. And it's all based on the word. That puts me in rest. And because I'm at rest, I don't need provision anymore from earth. Don't need it. I can have it. It's now a choice for me. I don't need it, okay? Then I am free to govern without fear. I can preach what I need to preach. I don't care if they give me money or not. I can go where I need to go. Three people ask me to India. I can go to India for three people. How much is that? $7,000 all up? Yeah. If God wants me to see those three people, they've got no money for you. It doesn't matter. I'm free. I've got choice. So based on word, it gives me choice. 
and choice means I can express my will in this area. Now, I'm not scared of food. That's another thing I'm free from, okay? So food, we have got. They're locking us down. I don't care. Can't take away our money. I don't care. But health, I still struggle with. So Chris, will you go to India? Yeah, I can afford that. And the food, yeah, I can afford that. What if you get sick? Yeah, I might get sick. <laughs> so I believe God for these things, but I don't believe God for health. I don't know why, but God knows why he's going to fire this son into it. So I must go by word form. And in word form, based on his nature alone, you don't engage any principles. No saying or reaping, no tithing, no spiritual warfare, no earthly principles, no Gibby, no go to fund, send me $3,000 I can get overseas for ministry. Just the word. And that's rest. And that's rest. Based on his character alone. And that Ephesians 1 3 onwards read, it's all him. Him, he did this, he did this, he did this, he did this. And that is a very practical example of the same thing Joe's talking about. It, well, the same thing you access all the realms, you're farther into it. Slowly, slowly, as is allowed for you. I am not allowed to do what Joseph does. I'm not allowed to. That's okay. I'm a son. So I'll follow me into it at his pace. I'm doing a very different thing than what Joseph's doing. <laughs> and I can't compare. It's comparison to FIFA joy. I'm like Peter. What about that guy? God says, what about him? What if he goes to all the heavens? Huh. Yeah. <laughs> God's going to follow me into it. I'm at rest in his nature. And he will do it. And when the right time is, I will do those things. Okay, very good. Once again, you listen very well to a very concept-laden thing. What were some good stories? And we all can do it. Okay, back to you, Joseph. Wow. Now you guys get just a small little taste on why I love Chris Black and me so much. <clears throat> so right after he went to Lebanon and then came to the United States, um, he, had a, he had a dream. Um, and then he saw me post something about Enoch on Facebook, and then he sent me a Facebook message um, and uh, asked me questions. Um, and when he asked me questions, uh, I could tell by I function a lot, a lot like a rabbi. I can uh, so based upon the questions people ask, um, I can tell where they are and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And it was very obvious that he knew what he was talking about. Um, and so we decided that we we're going to meet. And he said, "Hey, I'm flying to." Uh, Birmingham, or no, uh, I'm yeah, flying Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah. Yeah. Is Cahaba Heights near Birmingham? I asked you. Yeah. Is Cahaba Heights near Birmingham? And I'm like, Cahaba Heights is Birmingham. And so we met up. <laughs> and when we day. met up, yep, the next day we met up and we went for pizza. <clears throat> and it was terrible pizza, but Chris took three hours and started telling me about all these other people in the world who were just like I was. Um, he entered, he talked, he talked to me about Ian, um, who is now a friend. Um, he talked to me about Justin. He introduced me to Millie, he introduced me to all these kind of people. Um, and a couple of weeks later I was laying in the, uh, I was laying down and, um, was engaging heaven and saw this weird place that I'd never seen before and saw the spiritual dynamics of what was going on. And God asked me to go there and shift it. And I had no idea what it was. And he came up to me with a picture in his hand and he said, hi. In two weeks, I've decided I'm going to Machu Picchu. Do you want to go to Machu Picchu? And I went, what's a Machu Picchu? <laughs> <laughs> and he showed me the picture. And the picture was the thing that I've been engaging. And that was Chris and I's first adventure together um, six years ago, um, a few weeks ago. Um, yeah. February 14, we left. The same day Bob Jones left. We were going to yes. Airport. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And the word pay for it all because you, you could see that. I didn't have it. <laughs> Everything we needed to do, we did. Anything yeah. we needed to do, we did. Yep. No, it's, it's great. Awesome. Well, um, thank you, Chris. So wonderful to hear.